So while, um, so this is uh, Dr. Fiona Baird. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with uh, her and Jonathan Purdy, who is a learning and teaching consultant in the health group. Fiona is amazing uh, and because uh, I know her personally, I'm going to read her little bio, but she is a molecular biologist with a passion for educating future health professionals. And I can attest to that. I've seen her in action. She's amazing. Uh, her aim is to be is an educator to guide the transition to tertiary study with structured activities that allow personal growth and development of interpersonal skills that can be used in all aspects of life. Dr. Baird is a senior fellow in the Higher Education Academy in the UK. And I just wanted to add, Fiona is also, um, we're piloting, as you know, at Griffith. She was first in, best dressed in T3. Uh, she had a small cohort of final year students who took to this like a duck to water. And then this trimester, she went ahead and did an amazing 500 plus students uh, trialing uh, feedback for it. So for people out there thinking of trialing, uh, you know, we appreciate you from a learning and teaching perspective. Uh, Fiona, over to you. Thanks, Wanka. So Joan, if you could just transition my slides, thank you very much. Um, well, Hello everyone. Um, firstly, I would just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I am presenting from and pay respect to the elders past and present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So as Lenka said, I am one of those people that jump in and deliver things and test things quickly and sort of with everyone involved, so with transparency across the board. So my course is a foundation year health course called Cells, Tissues and Regulation. And it ha it, it's one of the biggest cohorts at, at Griffith University. It has around 550 students. Next year, that's probably gonna go up to, oh, well, in future years, it'll probably, probably go up to about 700 as um, some of our degree programs have rejoined our foundation year health. So I think someone was asking earlier in the q and if, if we had any health examples, and this is a great health example. So yeah, any questions, please pop them in the Q&A and because I can see them when they pop up. Um, so let's start, 30 degree programs. And I have one assessment item, which is purely about building skills in our first year students. Now our students come from a huge, huge spectrum of experience. Some are school leavers, some are mature age students. So this is an opportunity for them to build their identity as a Griffith student and also start building some skills around how they will work with other people from other health disciplines. So the aim is for the, piece, the assessment item, which is called the Research Encounter Project. It is to work as a group over six weeks period and this is usually done after census date, um, to create a poster on the contribution of a person of importance. Now there is an asterisk there because that is what we've had to do for these COVID-19 days. In a normal year, in a normal trimester, um, what we would do instead is have the students interview a researcher or a professional in their discipline and make a poster about their either their career path or their biggest achievement, or even a, from a higher degree perspective to see what, they, what they're doing in order to become a professional in that health discipline. But this year was a bit different. They had to be given a person of importance and all the research had to be done online. So with the assessment, it's very structured, but it is in a packed first trimester. So there is not as much support about learning how to give feedback. So what they need to do is they need to do a hurdle of putting up a group charter, which has set questions in it that says who's responsible for what and what the timeline is and when all of these bits and pieces are gonna be brought together to actually submit the poster. So that's the middle part, the middle hurdle is submitting the poster. The poster then gets marked by three tutors and normally in 
um, normal circumstances, it would be done as a presentation live to the tutors, but not to the cohort because the cohort is so large and they would get feedback right there in the moment. And the final hurdle is doing the peer assessment. This is usually done during the presentations when people are waiting to present. Um, they're given a form, they fill it in, and then we do data entry, or my tutors do data entry in order to put it, put it in, and that's used as a multiplier. Now, this entire project is worth a weight of 15%, and the students usually get a lot out of it, and they're quite happy with that weighting. This year, we had 121 groups, which is quite, not the largest we've ever had, but it was quite a, quite a big one to, to control. And on that note, because someone will always ask how, when we're managing 121 groups, how many implode? Um, every year, one group will implode and I will have to pull them in for a meeting and sit them down and talk to them. And usually it's the school leaver group that actually implode, implodes. Uh, so how was feedback groups used as peer, in this assessment item? It was used as the purely peer evaluation. So after they had submitted their poster and it was actively being marked, feedback groups opened up for seven days. Now, because of our students being time poor, overly stressed and anxious, we decided to make it only one criteria this year and put it at what was the contribution level for the group, uh, for the group member. So it was either 100%, 75 or 50. If a student had not engaged in the project for the first three weeks, the groups had been instructed to email me and let me know and um, their name would be left off the poster. So they get an outright zero. And that was done very well this year. Everyone emailed me that had to. And unfortunately this year for the first time ever, we actually had someone accidentally left off the poster. So. Um, the group feedback groups was really useful to say, oh, actually, no, everyone ranked her as 100% contribution, so that must be a mistake. So getting all the group members to, to convene and confirm that, and then we were able to give that person their mark. 48 students didn't complete the feedback groups assessment, but that means that the other 493 completed with no issues. And they found it really easy to use. So we use our team site as a discussion place. And a lot of them said how easy it was to use. The only thing that they got a bit confused about is there's no save button or anything to say, I have completed this. Um, so that was a bit of a confusion point for them. But even I was just like, oh, I don't know if it does that. Uh, but I just went in and checked to see whether or not I, know, one, did you want to go? I know it goes so fast that is all right um and so basically with that I was able to check and a really useful thing for feedback fruits is they self-peer mark they mark themselves and then it can also it gives you a ratio and compares how the group marked so you can see whether or not it's a personality thing and most of the people that didn't actually engage did use it appropriately and said actually I only did like 50 percent and that was reflected in the group feedback. Next slide, Joan. Thank you. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, the instructions are there so they can read it and scroll down. It's a very, very easy system to use and the students and myself find it really easy to, to actually get and download the data. You can put it directly into um, Blackboard if you need to, but in this case, it was really easy just to export the Excel spreadsheet and use it to as a multiplier in Grade Centre because we use Blackboard. But that's it. Can't speak highly enough about feedback routes. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Fiona. And I know 10 minutes or, yeah, 10 minutes just doesn't give what you do justice. Uh, if there are any questions, we do have one uh we we don't actually have one for uh fiona at the moment so awesome. um, well, we can move on then you can save the time <laughs> no we're keeping on track yeah, uh, but yeah certainly i i mean with your course I, i've seen such a progression of the way you've adapted online uh and and i think that this tool certainly gave you the confidence and the ability to do some of the stuff that you really rely on um, mm. to get those students' skills up. So I was really yeah. pleased too. Well, 
I might actually, if I've got the two minutes in this question time and no one has any questions. Oh, wait, some people have popped up some questions. People are thanking you and saying you're amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, um, for the peer review, um, because I use that in my third year course and the students peer reviewed each other's drafts for an assessment item. And that was actually in a really structured way because in week, let's say it's an intensive course that's run over six weeks, but in week two, they're actually given very clear um, guidelines and they practice giving feedback and taking feedback. And then they actually demonstrate their competency at doing that during the, the peer evaluation of each other's drafts. So that was just amazing to see in practice when we were trialing it and the students were hilarious because they were going why are you all standing around watching us whilst we do this because we did it in class um in a workshop because we were like we don't we're testing this we don't know if it's going to work we want to see what the bugs are and the students just sat there and did it for 20 minutes and gave each other really good feedback and so you know what sort of feedback it was it was a thousand character summary for a press um, like column blurb. So they had to summarize an article and do that. So it was amazing to you. So I could not, sh I, it was just amazing to watch. And the students got a lot of that, a lot out of it, particularly those students, because we had psychology students, we had med students, we had health science, and they just absolutely loved it. Yes. So it is something great for drafts, even as a informal, formative thing to do, that would be great. That's, that's wonderful to, to hear. We, we're getting calls for you to show how it's done and what it looks like, but we will hold off on that because uh, it, by the time we log in and, and yeah. all that sort of stuff, it just won't work. Uh, there is a suggestion that maybe uh, Max and Annika might like to answer some of the cool questions that are coming up. We do have a few moments, uh, I, but... Yes. Oh my, and by the way, I have Hi. to commend the team because when I was piloting back in October last year, we had something go very awry and it was late here in Australia, but one of the Feedback Fruits team actually was chatting with me live as we were trying to fix it and they were amazing. And so I was sitting in my office until seven o'clock and I was going, okay, is it working now? Is it working? And then we're like, oh my God, it's working. Everything's beautiful. So the team is amazingly supportive for this tool, which is brilliant. So all three parts are, um, all three groups that actually come together to help with this is amazing. Oh, it works really well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Even though you're in business and I'm in health, I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, without business, there is no health and without health, there is no business. So we all work together, yeah. right? Very true. <laughs> So there's a couple of questions in the um, uh, board, uh, sorry, um, on the Q&A around administering feedback, but I know, Max, you kind of wanted to do that offline. So uh, Jeremy's uh, asked that question, which is a great one. But there is a question there from Peter around, what would you say is the biggest student barrier when it comes, uh, sorry, barrier is that they don't know how to give feedback? But yeah. I know that's not a problem in your course. <laughs> no, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> um, with first year foundation year, honestly, I can't allow them to actually give feedback. I just get a number. And so in their own private chats, in their groups, in their discussion boards, in their team channels, that's where they give feedback. And if something is very wrong, then yes, I will step in and say, hey, you need to work on how you communicate. Um, but the biggest, that's the biggest barrier for first year. Second year and third year, if you can structure in how to give and take feedback and have live examples. So my boss actually came into one of my workshops and gave me feedback in front of my groups. And it was horrible, but they learned a lot because they saw how the feedback mechanism works in a university. So if, it can structure, if you can structure it into your course as a, this is a life lesson, this is what's going to help you get a good job and maintain employment it's an amazing thing to do but as i said i'm in a foundation year physiology basic physical physiology course so sometimes my students are like i don't need to know this i'm going to be a dentist and i'm like well you're gonna to have to talk to your patients <laughs> so and you're gonna to have to work with the people in your business 
So it's really important to build these skills from day one. And because you're getting dealing with your lecturers, it's better when you can actually talk to your lecturers and give feedback that's not viewed as aggressive or petty to say, oh, Fiona, your lecture slides are not good colour in that lecture theatre. Can you change them? Great. Thank you for giving me that feedback. Um, as opposed to, um, it was too hot today <laughs> and I couldn't focus. Um, that sort of feedback is one Great. Right. Thank you so much, Fiona. Uh, Max, and I'll be here at the end. thank you. For that we're done now. Uh, Max and Annika, we will leave you with those other questions. Uh, now I can see Joe is uh, going to introduce Wilco. So I'll hand over to Joe now. And um, thank you, everyone. And thank you, uh, Fiona.